Okay, what does it say about the knowledge that's useful and valid? It's useful and valid? I, I, don't, I don't find it. I'm lost. Here's at the bottom of two. That's where I'm not finding it. I couldn't find it either. Yeah, so paragraph three is not on its own page, I think, right? Now, what was paragraph four about? Yeah. Oh, it's about what philosophy of freedom is not. It's not a fixed information. <laughs> okay, that's a little building. bit combination of two and four, but that's good. What does he actually say it is? Building a foundation. It, okay, so he talks about the book, right? Yeah. And he says it's a foundation for what? Spiritual. Yeah, it's a foundation. For spiritual research. For spiritual research, right? Big claim, right? And what else? Uncertainty. For scientists. Right, uncertainty for scientists, right? Can I ask you which question is certainty for science? The view question or the freedom question? View. Right. And which is for the spiritual people? Which question? Freedom. The freedom, freedom question, right? So there's always two in each paragraph. So in paragraph three, what are the two aspects? You have validity and usefulness. Which one is for the spiritual people? The validity or the usefulness? Usefulness. Yeah. Right? Because then you can see in the spiritual world, right? And the validity is then for the scientists. Mm -hmm. So you see that in Telechi, every paragraph repeats the same idea from a different point of view. What is paragraph five about? Additions, misunderstanding. Okay, so it's about the changes and the additions, or the lack of changes, however you want to see it. What did you say? Changes? Additions? Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Incorrect interpretations. Incorrect interpretations, right? And then paragraph six. What does he say there? <clears throat> no new philosophies. Okay. So there's no new philosophies. Now part of this work, it's important, like let's say the fastest way to learn something is to, according to the Bible, is to teach it. So those who don't know teach. Why? Because you get smarter faster. You're like, oh yeah, I know what that means. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh yeah, no new philosophies, right? So when you teach someone this work, you'll become expert really fast, right? It's really wonderful. I didn't know what I was doing. I think I've sat down with over 500 people since I was 24. And I learned this really well, just sitting down, watching their reactions, seeing what they understand, don't understand, right? So I had a lot of practice with this cute little preface. So no new philosophies, but what is there? It leads into the riddles of philosophy. Okay, so a new book, right? So last time we did two books. This time we changed our condensement. We changed our synopsis to no new philosophy's new book. As you read the Steiner thing, you also want to be flexible in your own emphasis. So if you're reading theosophy, okay, theosophy has some terminology. It's hard to change your definition. But you'd be surprised how many elements Steiner puts in a paragraph that you can focus on, right? And this is part of the new thinking thing, is you're always seeing something new in a paragraph. So when you're teaching someone one-on-one, -on -one, they'll find something you never saw, and you better not tell them it's wrong, right? Because that's not very nice. You're not being very flexible, especially since they're probably right and you haven't seen it yet. So that's why the group work is so important. Okay, so looking at this, 
Did we go through the polarities of this whole shape? Everybody take their blue crayon, and on the bottom of the page, make a line. Which page? The blank page, I think. The what? The white. Or you can just write it on the table. The I, I, white paper. The white white paper. paper, yeah. You could turn it sideways, like landscape. Is that the right word? And then you put four colored lines. Do you have more blank paper somewhere? Yeah, I do. Let me give it to you. And those of you who are in Waldorf school, your color crayons coming. Could you show us Thank on you. a piece of white paper so we know? Oh, uh, just turn it sideways and do this blue, green, red. Yeah, so you have room to write in maybe, one. maybe well, one in. What? So paper, here, everybody here, have paper. Green, red, yellow. Yeah, leave just yeah, put blue paper. on the bottom. So no, let's say this is the bottom of the paper here. Uh, then I gave you. I gave you a pile. You should you need paper and instead you gave it all away. Right, four, four, five, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's your paper. La landscape or? Yeah, landscape. You know, it depends how small you want to make it. I don't know how small I'm going to make it. And then you have the yellow. Are we going to write about the yellow? Too, yeah, leave a little room. I'm a little cramped, but that's okay. Doesn't this is something you have to do 50 times with each thing. So let's say you're studying a cold science and you're doing like chapter one as the members of a human being. You want to reread those 18 paragraphs and resketch them several times. Why? Because then the form starts to go into your etheric body and something happens. And if you need a new piece of paper, I can't tell you how many times I made mistakes sketching these things out, and I had to learn to keep a steady hand, which was not easy for me. Okay. Now, why did we do this? We did this so we can see the form of the precipice more clearly. And everybody has their condensers, right? So which question would fit the blue level? How, who, why, what? What is the blue level? What is that physical level in anthroposophy? Physical body. OK, the physical body. What are its traits? Form. Whichever one you like. <coughs> yeah, this stuff, body. So, well, yeah, it's a what, right? So it's a what. What is the form, the content, right? And the etheric is what question? If the physical is a what, what is the etheric? You know the pencil exercise? What does Steiner give as questions? How would be the etheric, right? How the pencil's manufactured. And then what would the third level be? What question? The astral level. Why? Yeah, it's a why. What's the goal, right? And then the I level would be, of course, the who. would go on which level? We have six paragraphs. Where would they go? The base would be the two questions. Okay, so let's say the base would be the two questions, right? That makes sense. And what would the how? Which paragraph would be the how? Oh, because it's a living soul, how to do it. Yeah, how to read, right? How to read. 
And what you're not supposed to do, not memorize, right? How to read. So we have living soul activity. Or living activity is the answer. Or not theoretically. So let's say we don't understand what living is, at least we know what theoretical is. Because there's obviously not one way to meditate on this book. It's far too rich for that. I'm just showing you one way, right? The why. What is the why? Um, to, to be free. Okay, it doesn't say that there, but what does it say? To get knowledge, which makes you free. Yeah, it's a knowledge that has some kind of value, right? Free value, uh, validity. It doesn't spell it out, but because you understand how Steiner writes, you know what he's talking about. It's a living knowledge that you, hey, wait, am I free? Oh yeah, my consciousness is free because I think in tableaus. What paragraph was that? This is paragraph three, so I, mean, I should probably clean up the board. Everybody has their synopses, right? So I can erase these. Did you write that down? Can everybody read my writing? Synopsis. Yes. Oh. I didn't that. I was going to take a picture. So here we have paragraph one, nine, the two questions. Paragraph 2, 5, and paragraph 3, 1. So the blue level is kind of your physical level, the static level, the two questions in the book. The next level is how. Do you read theoretically? Do you read livingly? Do you change your life? It's all about movement, change, right? And knowledge it's the value, right? You have validity and you have usefulness. What about four? I'm going to put it on this side, just to keep the middle clear. What is what is paragraph four about? I should probably you guess first. I'll put it on the board. What's the main theme of four? Okay, but uh, that's true, but what's the main topic of paragraph four? Where is the foundation? In the content. book. Yeah, in the content, in the two questions, right? So we have the book, yet again, or as he says, I restricted myself to say no more than what's in the two questions, and it's a foundation for what? Spiritual research. For spiritual research, and what was the other one? Certainty for sciences. Certainty for science. Are you now writing on the who section? No, there's no who section independently, but I'm going to explain that in one second. Actually, you're going to figure out where the who went. So why is it on the same line as a 3-1? Because it has to be symmetrical according to Steiner. Oh, so we're going to go down? We're going to go down. It's oh. a six form. What I'll do is I'm going to give you at the end a list of forms you can play with, but it's unfair to imagine that you can't find it out by yourself. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know where you were. Because okay. the old way I used to teach it is I would show all the forms first and explain the theory and then apply the model to the text, but I'm trying to see if you can ferret it out so you don't complain. Can you just read, what's the number underneath? Mm -hmm. Ten sentences in paragraph four. Ten sentences. Oh. Yeah. So then you know ahead of time. So, so let's say if you look at a text just from the number of sentences, then you already get a feel. Wow, paragraph one must be pretty important because you put ten sentences there. So if you have, let's say, there's a paragraph in the philosophy of freedom that has like 32 sentences, and uh, I'm a bad boy, I should know what it's about. But he's emphasizing a point about that he really wants to make in the chapter. In the Philosophy of Freedom, chapter one of Philosophy of Freedom, the, the paragraph on love is the longest one in this chapter. It has 20 sentences, right? So it's not a mistake, he's emphasizing. Now you could say just because a paragraph is short doesn't mean it's not important, but he's developing the thought in many ways. Um, paragraph five.
What is that about? What's the main subject of paragraph five? No new philosophies. That's six. Oh, sorry. That's okay. No changes. No changes. Okay, where are the changes? What is he talking about? He only talks about it. He made changes by memory that he changes only the, the language but not the content. Okay. So, again, it's about his book and the new edition, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no changes. But what, what did you say? Do you vocabulary? Yeah. Okay. Except for what's inappropriately form formulated for the present time. Right, so he modernized the vocabulary. Right. But note he kept the he's and the him's in there. Oh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? So there's a new edition, has no changes, but has a new vocabulary. When was the first English translation done? Very early, and I forget by whom, and it's a book that's actually come back into a popularity. How many people read this? So I know Occult Science was published by a place in Chicago. Yeah, there's a lot of those things running around. There was one company in New York that were doing early editions of his Goethe work and stuff. They're pretty rare. If you look on uh, eBay, they're kind of expensive. Those are actually. What is paragraph six about? Now see, I did three different condensements with you guys in less than an hour, right? So you won't have, you'll have a hard time remembering what's in that last paragraph, but it's the second book, Riddles. And then maybe you could just mention Rudolf Steiner's survey of literature. So we'll, we'll mix it up one more time. And that's important to have this flexibility. Do you guys remember the archetypal plant? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take another look at that again. I'll draw the more traditional version. So if you look at your plant and you apply it to the preface, what, what do you notice? What are the four laws again? Etheric? Oh, you mean those other laws? The Gertian laws. So the first one is contraction and expansion, otherwise called rhythm. The second one is called enhancement, the growing up to the sum and down, right? or the further camp complication of each stage. Then polarity. And then inversion. Wow. Well, anybody, what is their polarities? Those are usually pretty easy to find. What's, is there a polarity between paragraph one and six? What is that polarity? Two questions, two books, right? Um, Frank? Yeah. Frank, what's the polarity between two and five? Um, maybe the experience of living, activity. 
activity, and then maybe the absence of that happening. Okay. In, in the readers, right? So he's saying here's a living activity, here's an absence, and it even changes. It's very good, esoteric polarity. On a very simple level, both of these are how to. But you see what Frank said? That's like usually after you've studied this for about six weeks, you come up with stuff like that. You start to see very subtle polarities. You know, here he's a, here's the living, you know, and they're wonderful. This is the inside of the book. This was the inside of the reader, right? Misunderstanding. Stuff like that. What is the how-to? How to read it? How the author changed it. So the etheric level is about change. But it's not only about that. Just an art condensement. What about the top level? The Y level? What's the polarity there? the knowledge is something absolute and the certainty in the science that one thing is absolute that's the knowledge mm -hmm. and then there is explained why the knowledge is the truth I mean isn't there also an okay. inner outer aspect of that tell me what's the inner outer aspect one is sort of given I'm, I'm sorry no no go with it which one is inner left or right uh, I would say the left is inner. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you have the knowledge, then you can go out into the world, right? right? right. right. Mm -hmm. And then now you can reverse that. Right? So maybe this is inside the book, this is inside mm -hmm. the person. Right? Or this is external. This knowledge is only externally in the book, right? And this is applied, right? Mm -hmm. So well, this it depends on your point of view. But the key is, like, so you see the validity and usefulness, and you have the foundation, and you have the certainty in science. So if you remember the story about the leaf, so the leaf now is about living thinking, the leaf now is about knowledge, the leaf turns inside out, it's about people, right? Can I ask you a question? Um, where does Steiner use the first person for the first time in the preface? What paragraph does he use the first person? I, I mean mine. Well, I. In the first paragraph? A check, you got a check. Well, I'll give you a hint, it's not in the first paragraph. It's <laughs> <laughs> too many sentences to bother you with. Yes. <clears throat> Can I say something else about the polarity of the... Go ahead. Okay. So it seems like in 3.1, in that whole why section, he also addresses a just common misconception about knowledge in general, where we, we tend to think that knowledge, well, it's your opinion, or we'll never know, you know, what sort of knowledge is, it, but he's, he then goes into say there's, there's, you can actually know something by doing the spiritual research, and science also can be certain. So right. he's completely debunking a, a huge misconception about knowledge and truth. Yeah. So what is knowledge a synonym for in anthroposophy in this case? Does he mean normal knowledge? He says actually a kind of knowledge. So what he's referring to is actually the consciousness soul knowledge. <coughs> so if you study the book for its form and your thinking is always dynamic, you get that disk in your hard drive. And all of a sudden, a knowledge, a consciousness soul activity, is very useful for thinking spiritually and thinking scientifically. So right? Because the experience. conscious soul, soul is truth, beauty, goodness, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, uh, kind of clairvoyance, right? Or, or also, the di if you have dynamic thinking, you do dynamic science. Right? The reason why environmental problems can't be achieved as well as they could is because people see linearly they introduce a fish into the Great Lake and then all of a sudden something explodes because they weren't thinking of all the consequences. So this thinking is supposed to expand that by seeing in tableau. 
So, but can you go back to your question about the word is ikum? Yeah, did you find the I? Paragraph four. Paragraph four, right, is the first time he uses the word I. So yes. back to Joan's question, if you allow me to read. Where's our, is our editor not here today? Oh, too bad. This is what I thought about the content of the book when oh. I wrote it down 25 years ago. Today, too, I have to write down such sentences if I want to characterize the purpose of the book. Paragraph four. At the original writing, I limited myself to say more than that which is the most, uh, most sense connected to the two basic questions referred to here. And then he goes on. I think he uses the word, I mean mine, something like 60 times before the end of the paragraph six. So back to your question, where is the I? The I is in the second half. So Steiner starts talking in first person here and third person here. So why does he do that? Why does he start so late to use the word I? What's the effect? One yeah. needs to bring you in from the outside to his personal idea. But it kind of brings you in from that you feel that you think what he explains you. Right. Say that again. <laughs> Wait. So you know what he thinks. Right, is being explained to you. So what's the, but do you need that? Do you need a person? Can't you just speak in passive voice? The book was no. written. It is argued that one should study it this way. Do you need the I necessarily? It, it is liberating to find finally that he said I did it because this and that. Okay, and what principle is that? If it turns inside out in the middle, like where's the inversion? If you have the archetypal plant, it grows, and then in the middle, it turns inside out. <coughs> and so what he's doing here is he's turning inside out. Mm -hmm. So when you're reading, you're reading, you know, there's nobody in this preface. It's just third person. And all of a sudden, he says, I, rings your bell. I think he's making a direct appeal to the reader there for sympathy for his own effort. Well, why does he do that in paragraph one? See, wow. if you keep focusing on the content, I could argue, well, I'll show you another preface this <coughs> afternoon where he does start with the I in the first paragraph. Well, so, so I want you to, the uniqueness of the mathematics, the fact that the first three <coughs> don't have I and the second three do, because you can ask for sympathy without using the word I. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a poetic development. Okay. Uh, it resonates subconsciously. I, mean, they, uh, I don't know when they first started doing this kind of analysis, uh, how far we know. But presumably, most of the people who read it, and it was an intelligent people, did not analyze it in this way. It's right. a tenor. Uh, it's but it did tenor. resonate with that, the way he developed he speaks it subconsciously. Of because of the way, yeah. right? Because of the way, it kind of gives you a different uh, instead of by doing it, it this way. It sort of uh, yeah. brings you it. I'm, I'll have a find a word that brings you into a different um, way of uh, understanding, but that's not the right word of what that what I is. Like we don't really. I as something. Right. And so this sort of brings you into the, the I am aspect, right? The great I am. Why not, right? I mean, I wouldn't get too esoteric on the first meeting, but the question is can you steal this form for your own writing? So let's say in the first, let's say you write a, a four paragraph note, and the first three paragraphs you're very objective, and the final paragraph you say what you want to say, right? Edgar Allan Poe, he said, write a story with the end in mind. So Steiner's doing the same thing. Where's the actual preface? The actual preface is the last paragraph. The book is sold out, didn't want to add anything, and what I already wanted to say was said already. That's the actual preface. The rest of this is not a preface. There's only one paragraph that's the true preface. So Steiner said you should think seven times as slowly as you normally do. Why? Because you're leading the reader through a process. Wow, 
how many times am I going to do that? Well, be careful, though. We don't want you to fall on you. I probably don't. I, then we can take the whole thing, thing off is, the floor. That's okay. I'll, I won't kick it 50 more times. I'll work on that. Well, I'll stand on this side. Anybody else see anything? Have any questions about this? Well, I think that the the I statements is also a teaching about taking ownership and responsibility for what you put out there in the world, rather than just the passive. Okay. And the, so because the style. passive always assumes that everybody agrees with you and that everybody, right? Everybody thinks this. I don't. I don't even have to identify. I don't even have to like be willing to take heat for this because it's the truth. So. By doing that, he's, it's, a, it's a teaching about freedom. He's using his freedom to say something that's important to him. Okay. So what I'm going to always force you guys to come back is not to tell, interpret so much, but always go back to the structure. Because the nature of logical tech. What a church master does is, was it by biblical exegesis, right? They take a Bible passage and they interpret oh. until infinity. And it could be very well true, but most of it, the, the Bible passage fits what they want to say anyway. In this case, you want to do the opposite. Instead of going outwards, you want to go inwards. So in other words, you don't want to take what you know and apply it. What I want you to do as my friends is instead of talking of having an abstract discussion on the I, I want you to start comparing paragraph one to four. I want you to stay within the framework and make the preface talk to you. Don't take what you know. So it takes you out of linearity. It takes you out of linearity. This is the only time that you can practice this thinking in its purity unless you're playing music, right? Because this is an interval. I'm asking you, show me the interval. Don't tell me what you know, unless you make a discovery. Otherwise, you're doing the theoretical. Now, there's a healthy, if you're a teacher, of course you want to talk to people about the I and all those things. And it does have its place. However, the book is not about the seven I Ms or the Saint Germain Foundation, right? <laughs> you know, which, which I enjoy their work, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but I want you to stay within the Gestalt. And when you stay within, then your thinking becomes living. If you start radiating out in all sorts of bizarre, who's talking about conspiracy? That's the conspiracy theory. You start connecting stuff theoretically. My friend says, oh yeah, I can see it. This is the Christ, this is the Holy Spirit, and this is the cherubim. He's like, all right, you know, whatever you're smoking, don't give it to me. It's, it could be very well possible there's a seven hierarchy of something in there. But it's not helpful to you as a practitioner. Because your thing is to play a game, to live in this music. These are musical notes. I want you to play them. Could you give us an example of what you're talking about? Compare paragraph one to four. There's no Gertian laws. <coughs> Go to paragraph one and four. How is paragraph one repeated in paragraph four? Because it's a organic thinking. So we have six times the same idea. Two questions. Mm -hmm how to answer the two questions, two ways to answer them, the value of the two questions. Where are the two questions here? And two ways of thinking. From the point of view of being answered, right, and their value. If you answer them, this is what happens, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Stay within the thought form. Don't wander away. So if you want to write a great symphony, you copy Beethoven. You stay within his principles, and after you imitate Beethoven, right, Wagner imitated Beethoven, rewrote his symphonies for years, then it became Wagner style. My best friend, he won a writing award, he spent hours copying pages of Hemingway out. Hours, hundreds, thousands of hours copying, retyping, rewriting Hemingway. His, when you read his sentences, they're so crispy. And then you read Anne Rand, who can't write at all, but wrote a great book. Right? She didn't do that when she just wrote, you know. So a real artist, Wagner was a real artist, and you want to imitate the artist's thinking. Because what's going to happen is when you sit down to write a proposal or an essay or even anything, you have to really limit yourself to the essentials and develop the thought organically. So I know I've scolded you a little bit. I hope you forgive me.
forgive me. Any more questions about that? No. <laughs> Maybe a question would be, this might be drifting out, but uh, if you were to compare the knowledge, validity, usefulness with the last one, um, the riddles and survey of literature, mm -hmm. the top left and bottom right, then it would seem like why why would you why would you want uh, and why would you want the riddles or the survey of literature? Like why would you be interested in other ideas or, or concepts if you had the knowledge and the soul experience? Well he kind of says you shouldn't be because he says he wrote the riddles of philosophy out of the point of view of the philosophy of freedom. So in essence it's not necessary because you're right. If you already have that knowledge, why would you read his other book? If you're asking me, I would say because the riddles of philosophy has some new thought forms you haven't seen yet. Oh, let's see how Steiner tackled that topic. So once you have the philosophy of freedom or any basic book, because the philosophy of freedom is so boring, it's hard to get really, uh, it's exciting. But it, it, it's so boring if you keep rereading the same chapter. But what you're doing is you're going to the gym building muscles. And then when you go to a very complicated book like Occult Science, you have the muscles to be able to see everything in one big picture. So from a certain point of view, riddles of philosophy is only important if you're tired of the same gym equipment or you've mastered this book you can go on to another example. And then or, it has a or if you can't get the first book at all. Yeah, you don't have to do the philosophy of freedom. You know, we were talking this morning that, yeah, there's, who wants to read it? There's other great books Steiner has. This can be a little bit dry. And some of the chapters, quite frankly, some of the paragraphs, I still don't know what he's talking about. And other people do, so I guess it's me. Um, philosophy is a fairly simple book. Sometimes, Lowndes used to call it uh, new thinking for dummies, and the reason why is Steiner really used very clear, gentle forms, while the philosophy of freedom can be pretty tricky. Now, there's some chapters that are not tricky at all, like chapter two, but uh, I'll get into that. I can show you my diagrams later. What I, I think is so important, I, I mentioned this yesterday, is that Steiner gives prevailing views that that, and he gives the he gives Brentano, he gives Hartman, he gives these views, he gives Kant, and these have insinuated themselves into all kinds of thinking today. So, I, for me, one of the, the most interesting anthroposophical thinkers today is Terry Borden, because he applies anthroposophical thinking to history, to things which have happened at the turn of the century, Steiner, and that was a remarkable thing, Steiner read a lot of newspapers and he made remarks about what was happening in contemporary <coughs> events, which were, he was contrary in that sense. He went against the popular opinion of the media, what most people, oh, United Nations, League of Nations, terrific, we're all going to get together and we're going to, oh, Treaty of Versailles, terrific, right, we're going to have peace in the world. But Steiner had that insight because he saw the, the conclusions that these would eventually lead to because they were based upon faulty or incomplete philosophical understanding of various questions. Right. And I think that's what's so important for me, at least in, in the philosophy of freedom, in the riddles of philosophy, because he does take up these, these I would say almost fundamental views that, that permeate our, our whole world today. Sure, I mean, to be fair, I have to emphasize form today because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. If I was to do a lecture, it's not a big interest of mine, but I've had two excellent teachers who talked about all the applications of the philosophy of freedom's epistemology to the real world. Yeah. And I think it is important, however, you know, Got it. Yeah. It, that ignores, that's important as an informed human being but it's not important in terms of this. And I did a study once of Steiner's first six books, 
And I found the same 14 ideas again and again in every single book. Mm. So when people talk, oh, this book is so different, it's only because they haven't read the other books. Mm. Not carefully. So I took notes. I, I had a chart to show you that in GA1, almost all the main ideas of the philosophy of freedom can be found. In Goethe's worldview, GA6, the same can be said in truncated version. I found about 90% of the philosophy of freedom in theosophy. He talks about thinking and concepts and all sorts of things. So, in a certain sense you're right, but if you're looking within Steiner's domain, there's a lot of repetition, you have to ask yourself why. Yes? Is it, is it Fred? I can't see. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, okay. So bringing together what you said, Fred, which is really interesting, and what you're trying to do with us, which is to think in form, uh, I wonder if the people who went wholesale for the Treaty of Versailles without thinking of the future of those acts, right? Um, like, from the form perspective, what was missing from the thinking in terms of the form? Like, if, if the Treaty of Versailles had been looked at in this way, it might have become obvious that the future of that act was going to be World War II. So right. could we, would that be a valid analysis from your perspective? You know, I mean, that's hard. If, if, if the people had studied uh, this way, that type of thinking, would they have made the same no, but we can look at it now. Decisions? We can look at it now and say what was missing from that thinking. Oh, you mean as it progresses? Like their decisions, how that would progress in the future? Well, like maybe the, 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 the Treaty of Versailles did not consider the who question. Oh, I see. Like if, if that had been sufficiently thought through, they wouldn't have maybe signed it. Yeah, there would be the willingness to think in a certain way, then everything would be different. But uh, therefore, I think it's exactly what he teaches is we need to learn the notes first, and then we can have the effect of the piece, so to speak. And this is just to look exactly what is there and then let it speak by itself because just by looking what it is. And I understand it's kind of difficult with the words because the words are translated, but however, they give certain ideas, clear ideas. And then we could apply that, I hope, to apply this principle of how to study everything and anything. And of course, if we would start with politics and those treaties, then we maybe would find the way, if it would have been written in a different way, right. how humanity would be different. Right. But so that's the key, what he tries to do. Right, hear. so if we analyze pretty much anything, exactly. we would discover mm -hmm. why some things end up having antisocial outcomes. Correct. But yeah. Sure, but let's understand. give an example that's not so heated. Let's say if you're studying this new thinking and you're an architect. <laughs> the Treaty of Versailles, right, still let's heated. Let's say something like an architect. <laughs> what makes a great architect? I don't know. Is it just that he learns all these forms, or does his architecture somehow fit the landscape? So there's so many possibilities that go into being a great architect without the tragedy of a war. How would this thinking help? Maybe by making his thinking more dynamic to start. Then the next level is, if you're in this space where you're comparing, and you have this member Snyder talked about thinking in the in-between, creating out of nothing. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to, when you practice, that you're supposed to get moral intuitions. This is about your moral life. So maybe people would have more moral intuitions if they stayed in those states. Because ultimately, of course, Steiner did so many things and tackled so many things, it's hard to know where are you in the world, right? You can only work usually in a small domain, you know, or I can't, I can't do too much. But he worked in so many domains. But let's say Steiner said, if you had 48 people in his last lecture, he said, if you had 48 people that carried the Michael thought, which is basically this new thinking, because it's not an actual thought, the whole world, you, you would have 100 monkeys. In those days, it was 48. He said, four times 12 souls that carried the Michael thought would make kind of a vortex, and things would change on the Earth. Right? So maybe today, that number might be 1,000, because we're so far behind, and we've had all these world wars. So for the time being, trying not to solve the next treaty, we need to bring this thinking down to the earth and let's see what happens once we've done that as so-called Michael School. If the Michael School still hasn't managed to get 48, 
you know, time's running. You know, there's a, and people are already reincarnating from the last anthroposophical society <laughs> in this one. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, missed opportunity. You know, and that's why George is so special. Is that if you humble yourself to a book in a group where you think like this in unison, Florin Lout said six people studying this together has more power than the New York Stock Exchange because it's so rare that you're immersing yourself in this angelic form of thinking. So when you're a group, you're creating a huge vortex that you can't usually see. And you, therefore, you think you're just fooling around with a text, but you're not. This is really special. One of the reasons why George didn't share this is because in the beginning, it can be damaging because it's too powerful to do. <coughs> what I'm gonna take a chance today is I'm gonna ask you to go the next step with me you're going to make your own condensments on a tableau, and I'd like you to present them to the class or to each other. I want you to have a feel what it feels like to go, okay, hi everybody, today I'm going to talk about two questions of the human soul life. The first question is this, the second question is that. These questions relate if the soul realm. Paragraph two. In the next paragraph, Steiner goes on to talk about the two answers. On the one hand, there's a theoretical answer that you know is not true because you keep it in your memory, but and you're going to tell the story, each one being a separate breath. And going back to that yogic idea, each paragraph is a breath. And you're going to breathe this preface, and then you're going to eventually do it backwards and forwards like anybody play piano, like the churny exercise <coughs> of practicing your scales. This is scale number one. It has six notes. And when you get to experience that, I think a lot of your questions will fall away because you'll feel the power of the text. In the beginning, you might not even be able to see it. So, um, let's try, give me a chance here. I promise you, you will experience something with this thinking. Everyone, take another blank paper, redo this diagram. Uh, do you need, yeah, yeah you need to give this thinking a chance. Redo your own synopsis, make it, kind of uh, add a little more meat. So I, since I'm familiar with it, I only need the two questions. For each one, maybe write one or two sentences on that paper. These are like your cheat sheets. So give the four lines, and then fill in what you need, enough information to remember each paragraph. And definitely use the colors, because you want to associate each paragraph with a color. So let's say if I share, like see how I did this here? This is what my homework actually looks like when I do it. I always have pretty colors, diagrams, you know, depending on the chapter. You don't have to color it in today. This is a thinking and feeling. So when you enter into the blue paragraph, the two questions, you want to feel something static something blue. When you enter into the green paragraph, you really want to feel that green before you breathe and talk about that paragraph. So you'll need a little more space to write. So I can... Yes. What? So this time you want to write maybe a sentence or two. It's your own understanding of the first paragraph.
something like that. So you want to, don't worry about what I wrote, just uh, yeah, find your own kind of synopsis or use parts. So we are doing all of page one that you gave out, the paragraph. Yeah, so you're all just nine redoing paragraphs. Uh, all, not individual sentences, just paragraph one, one sentence. I mean, you can even use this. Yeah, so we'll take, it'll take about probably 10, 15 minutes to do it, right? Using your notes. You're going to fill this up all the way. Yeah, you're going to do basically one or two sentences for each paragraph. So we're basically doing what we've been doing only now in a our little own bit longer. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're taking your time to do it, trying to rewrite the preface in your own words. Got it. Because you're going to tell the class or your partner what you wrote and have a sense of what it feels like <coughs> to recite it in form. Does it have to be in the code? These paragraphs, or the, the content of the paragraph? Do you, do you have to go from no. one to... Okay, absolutely not. Okay, you can start. There's a soul realm that answers these two questions. First question being a question of freedom, so yeah, you can play around with it. Because you're, it's still yours, it's still the two questions, because if you look at every sentence, every sentence has a little question in it. But you can't avoid it. I mean, you could try it. So my early condensing time I managed to avoid it. I don't know No, no, there's no fast. Do as many as you can. If you did three of them, that's enough. You just want to have an experience. Or, I'll help you cheat. Get the edge of the glass for the test. And remember, it's a synopsis of sorts. To say so, there are two questions, and then you, would, on this. then you would kind of imitate that. You would write all the information <coughs> that helps you to recall paragraph one. Or just enjoy other people's. But yeah, the, so the start would just be to kind of rewrite what that paragraph says. Well, you don't need any special interpretation, just make notes. 
This doesn't make sense. sense. Yeah. Book. Yeah. You are the human being. Yeah. You know what it is? It's like cheat sheets. First when you had like contemporaneous speaking the first question in school. It is so when you look at it, it just kind of reminds you you can say whatever you want about this it. This feels okay. well, itself to be the sick word. For everything yeah, else which comes to me, the human just being to experience the science. Okay. Okay. Even if you said so there are two questions, so good, there's a right? question, mm -hmm. there's a free question, question. Mm -hmm. and these questions so, are so connected. That, it's it's really really you don't want to try to coin something. Well, then, so we go from one but here, two. it says, and yeah, gives him here. the feeling so that it could not support itself. Or it says, what? Well, it's hot in here. Is it possible to view the being I don't think being in on. such a way it's not on. that this view proves itself to, to be the support of one of those which comes to no. the human being? Okay. Everything, it, it's talking to everything else which comes to meet the human being That's paragraph gives, one. gives them the feeling that... <laughs> That's the problem. In the that, beginning, you want to write everything. That Try the view of the human being could not support itself. Trust. Everything. Move everything. Say that again. Everything that... A couple of Okay. Okay. It's referring to everything else which comes to meet the human being, all the stuff of life. And that this view proves itself to be the support. The support for everything, for everything else, else that comes, comes to human being, being experiences and, and, and which gives him the feeling. Oh, like I see. Little things okay. like this. Right. So it turns In around right here. Right. Not here. Right. <clears throat> see, I, I thought that up to this it, point it was confirming. But no, that's to not help right. you remember. Right. Yeah, it's like extemporaneous yeah. speaking. And which gives him the feeling that he could not support. That's fine, because... <clears throat> okay. Yeah, like that. Because it's enough that you feel comfortable with. First question. Maybe when you actually get up to the So always a little extra. But not the whole thing. Everything else. How are you? Are you suffering? Isn't this like a really weird way of oh, saying something? Yes. Okay. Saying what you're saying? Yes. Kind of misleading? It's kind of German. He's kind of German. Yeah. Yeah, it's like kind of German. It's kind of German. It's German sentence structure. I mean, the phrase it has been translated, but that's why it's so awkward. Yeah, because it is as good as the one teaches it to be. I could have a subterrible in the beginning, that's why. Here's question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> or is such a free hood a mere illusion which arises in him because he is not aware of the workings of necessity as any other natural event? His will depends. Okay, I get that. No? Okay, so that's good. I want to stop reading now because I understand. I think when you're done. <laughs> you don't want to be partners anymore. No. You have to find someplace that you else. Okay, let's see. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't have something. <laughs> I don't so. have a page for paragraph three. It's on the sit down on the bottom. Oh. Yeah, because it was so small I didn't want to. Okay. This book will be shown to the source. These, these sentences are all of the sentences in each one of these paragraphs from the preface. What about them? Oh, yeah. You, yeah you, no. This is the entire this first This is the entire paragraph. first paragraph. So yeah. make that into one sentence. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or two. Whatever you need to condense. Yeah. So why do we condense? We condense because eventually the position alone will help you to recall the whole paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in order to get there, you have to keep condensing. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be stuck with one word, questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, two questions, I know, the few and freedom. Da, da, da. But in the beginning, you've got to kind of earn that. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, so speaking of earning, how do I know that paragraph two is green, except you that don't. we discussed it? Right, you wouldn't. But yet I'm writing it here. Okay, only because it comes after paragraph one. Right. So right. that's, I'm just taking... Right. There's no universally green or red paragraph. Right. So, so by doing this, I'm asking myself, why is it like this, yes. and learning the pattern. Exactly. Because I could be wrong. Like, I could come and give a lecture about a chapter. I've done that before. I gave a lecture on a chapter, and I was wrong. I didn't know the form, and I found out from someone else. Okay. Right? So I wasted all these people's time. So, yeah. Just because I say it, right, doesn't mean it's true. We're still recording you. That's good. Yeah, they need to hear that. I don't mind making mistakes. He said he was wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty lonely from a certain point of view, right? So. Not a lot of people want to do this work. Although
Although there is an uh, organization in Germany that does it, but I, I don't really know how deep they are. Yay. I turned it on, Margaret, because yeah, I was so hot. hot. Yeah, we were we're so hot. Sweating. Well, she's freezing to death. Well, she's and sitting and underneath that vent right there. She's sitting under the blower. She's under the blower. Let's move <laughs> over here. I, I was just melting, and I don't usually feel hot. All right, I'll put it on I, I 76. Do we agree to that? All right. That's not too hot and not too cold. Okay. But not 78, but it which is what it was. I'm under that vent. Because it is. Okay, 76 now. Okay. 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 What is this? No, what, what is there? What did you put there? Uh, this is, I know, this is actually probably the one most, I really kind of want to play with this, so it's probably Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And does this is paragraph four? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your own story. <laughs> Just, uh, I thought you were being funny making it to a seven form, which is another exercise. <laughs> you can take a, a five form and make it into a eight form. You can play with the text. It's actually kind of fun when you get a little more feel. You can make the Our Father prayer a 12 form. Reaper. Yeah. Just me to pray. Oh, start to say the Lord's Prayer every day. Did you say it in Latin? Aramaic? Probably not. I heard you say it in Latin. Yeah, I say it in Latin. No, it's a good Catholic. It has the support of it. So it does resonate somewhere. A friend of mine says I should say it in Aramaic. It's just not just in the original. But he's he's from Orthodox. Yeah, I have an Aramaic copy I like to use. How is everybody? Almost done? I'm on paragraph three. Paragraph three? Okay. I haven't even done one. I see.
give everybody five more minutes to finish up, and then we'll do some presentations, and then we'll take a break. Is that okay? Jeremy, you want to go up first? Okay. So what you basically do is just kindly talk to people about the preface. You can act as if you wrote it or he wrote it. And between each paragraph, take a little breath and try to feel into the colors. Okay. Oh, no, you got to go front. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's more scary than right. Can I just read what I wrote? Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, don't lose your affect. <laughs> there are two basic questions. Whether a view of the human being can be found that supports the soul life, and can free will be claimed by the human Living thinking is the foundation of this book. There is no theoretical answer, only an inner activity of the soul. Knowledge is pointed to, which proves its own validity. Here is a new book with no new philosophies. Oops, I skipped. This book provides a foundation for the spiritual researcher and certainty for the scientist. You have to imitate the style of writing. This book leads to the view that human beings live in a true spiritual world. The book was misunderstood the first time. In this edition, only changes in language have been made to modernize the language for the present time. Here is a new book with no new philosophies in it. Excellent. 
Bravo. So let's, what, you know what's interesting? What paragraph did she skip over? Did you listen to her? She goes, oops, I skipped one. Which one did she skip over? Do you know what number it was? What? Yeah, what color is four? Red. Red. Why did she skip the red paragraph? What's that? She skipped the red paragraph because it's scary. That happens all the time in study groups. That means she came up here, she was blue, green, red, and then it went red inside. The red inside is a very moral paragraph. And the fact that she skipped it means she was really in touch with those levels. What, no, what number is that paragraph? Number four. It's, it's a red paragraph. I, I can't tell you this is really wonderful. So, so, nothing. so she went... She read one, two, and three with no problem, and she went to five. Oh, she went to say, <laughs> yeah, you skipped over that thing. Why did she skip four? And it, you'll see in study groups all the time, people never miss the first, never miss the second, but they always miss the top reds. So it's really, really nice. And right in your affect. But that's, it basically sounds like, you can't believe, I mean, I've been around the block in anthroposophy, but people will take a chapter of Knowledge of Higher Worlds and make it to their own lecture. That's usually plagiarism, right? But it's good plagiarism. But in this case, you have the basis for your own lecture. And that's what it's supposed to be. It becomes a schema for your own thoughts. And your rewrites were, were actually really good, right? Yeah. I thought so. And you could still follow the content. And it was original in some aspect. That's it? No, Daryl. Sorry, really. Yeah, take your time. Is it different when you're standing up? You'll see it's, it's really hard. <laughs> Much harder. Okay. Um, Take a breath between each paragraph. There are two questions regarding the view of the human being. There are two questions. One is regarding the view of humans, and the other is free will dealing with are we truly free which brings these questions bring us into aspects of a soul life the quote unquote answers are not theoretical as in intellectual this leads to an activity of the soul. This quote unquote knowledge, which we would refer to as uncommon, to our normal way of viewing, can actually be useful and valid, which we would not expect. The content can be useful for spiritual research and valid if you are a scientist. This basically helps us understand how this can resonate with everyone. Because of misunderstandings, vocabulary has been changed, but the content has not. Another book came forth to apply this to see how a new view can be applied to old ways of looking and seeing and understanding. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Say here the friend next time you want to work on transitions, mm -hmm. which is normal speaking.
practice. So when you go up, you would focus less on the paragraph and more on the transition. Because like you've already grasped the content. So when you would move, let's say, from paragraph three to four, you would do something like this knowledge is valid. Better. And think of some clever transition. So what does this mean for the rest of the world? Well, on the one hand, we have the scientists the book that serves them. That, so you can also kind of make a little bit more of a story with the leading. Okay. Yeah, don't be afraid to do that, because it's still entertaining. Okay. Aren't both sides to science? Science is known. Right. Okay. So it's except in the second half. But if you combine the doctoral thesis with uh, Goethe's theory of knowledge, now Goethe's theory of knowledge has the same chapter headings as the philosophy of freedom. Really? Optimism, pessimism, thinking in the service of the world, except in the other book it's called Thinking and Thinking. So there's not a lot of new stuff. What he does do, for example, in GA2, the optimism and pessimism chapter is one paragraph, and the philosophy of freedom is 52. So he expands some of the ideas in that book. But if you compare them side by side, all the main ideas are already in the doctoral thesis and the book that preceded it. Mm. Who else wants to go up? Not me, but when yeah. do we get into the yellow? <laughs> <laughs> the next preface. Well, you have the yellow, except the yellow has been truncated into the red level. It doesn't get its own voice, for whatever reason, in this. in this. But the next preface we're going to do, after the break, whatever, has two seven forms with nice yellows. Yeah, so you get a feel. Um, it's a really good question, because this, it's very, he has two prefaces, and he put in those two prefaces all of the main forms he uses in all of his books. They're the two keys to unlock the book. So yeah, there's a lot of ego levels in the second appendix or the original premise. Anyone else want to go up? Frank. Enjoy. And you can bring a lot of color, bring the colors into it if you want. Okay. Don't be shy. So the the questions here, the seeds uh, that we're going to begin this journey with, are uh, can the human being know everything around it through itself, through some knowledge of itself, and are we free? To explore these questions, we can't use theories or even answers, but rather an inner living soul life 
will be able to meet these questions. This inner life wants to meet the outer life and be valid and useful. And this book is a guide into such a space and shows itself in the style that it's written through the style it's written in. This book is essence and essentially the same still as it was. Since it was written regarding any future fruits it's, it remains the same but to meet these other philosophical ideas that have come there's another book, Riddles of Philosophy. It's a really good introduction. You know, it's, it's amazing how quickly people can do this now. You know. Congratulations. Right? Anyone else? Joan, you going up? Yeah. All right. Let's take a picture for the team. You go, baby. That's because I thought I had to keep my idea while I'm doing it. That's the best way to learn these There are two root questions um, in that the human soul is asking out of our need to understand. And the first question is, is there a vital view of the human being that would help us to understand uh, what meets us in life? And the, the, quest the second question is, are we free? or is freedom an illusion? Those are the two fundamental questions at the root of our need to understand as human beings. We can integrate those two questions if as part of a truly living soul life. There are two sides of the same question, integrated through our soul life. If I can find myself in a new region of the soul, that's where I can integrate those two questions. Um, and they will, they will, by answering those questions, I can find out how to attain valid and useful knowledge for my life. This knowledge will not be theor theoretical. It's not the kind of knowledge that I can memorize, and it won't be an illusion. Every human being needs to needs and wants to attain understanding that is valid and useful. In this book, I am not going to reference any of my spiritual research. I am going to give a foundation for spiritual research and a foundation for other types of knowledge, as in science. These two questions are the basis for all of knowing, and once you answer them, they will be the proof that the spirit, that the human being is living as a spiritual being. There's a possibility that in reading this, you may want to enter the realm of the soul in order to answer these questions. Um, this book is independent of all my other spiritual writings. I am not going to uh, defend against uh, misconceptions that have occurred in the 25 years since I've written it. I have changed only the words that um, are no longer relevant. And um, now, 25 years later, 
There is a second book called The Riddles of Philosophy, which continues and elaborates of what I wrote 25 years ago. Yeah, like I, I understand it yeah. only through doing this. Only through doing it. Yeah, wait till you get to the other chapters. It's amazing <laughs> what's in there. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm trying not to cry publicly, but <laughs> I love this work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn on the camera. Uh, yeah, but if no one else wants to go, can I get no, you to go later? You. Okay. Uh, let's please take a 15 minute break. And, uh, um, I think actually we have an hour and a half break for lunch because we must because we go out. Okay, what time is so it? So I think it's uh, 9.30 to 11.30. Could you check, Cheryl? No, 9.30 to 12. 9.30 to 12. 30. Okay. We have two hours for lunch from 12 to 2. And 12 yeah, we do. To do you have it 12 okay. to 2 or is it 12.30 to 2? No, it's 12 to 2. Okay. Just a minute. I'll an hour and a half is adequate for lunch. Well, okay. It's up to you guys. Here's it's what your it dollar. says. I can stay here all day as long as you have questions. As soon as you have questions, I... What time is it it's 9.30 to 12. It is 11.21. We can have a break. Yeah, let's take a nine-minute break. break. And then, yeah, and then, then, break. And then yeah. 2 to 4.30. Yeah. Okay. You have to tell me again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm still working on the first set. I'm kind of bad I still work. I, I get it, and then I lose it. I get it, and then I lose it. And then I lose it, lose it, lose it. It's really fun. I mean, this is kind of study. Well, well this, not only that, but this paragraph, I mean, what this whole preface, I think, will give you, a, if, if you understand the way he's suggesting, will give you a, a real grounding in anthroposophy. I think then you can talk out of anthroposophy. This is a key for that. It's amazing. And, and so I'm like really fired up to, to to read this, go home and read this paragraph again and again. And again. But you see, that, that's, do you remember what I did with Great. Well, you always I've heard you talk about the process. Yeah, you are. No, 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 you were great. You were like focused. Yeah, I really understand. Huh? I understand this now. Okay, well, I don't yet. I'm still on the first sentence. I mean, I no, I'm still on the, the second sentence. I understand two root. I understand okay, so, two root okay. questions. So a lot of things just happening. Just what? Just right now? Yeah, just no, one? just just right now. I I, I just said I understand this, now. and you said I don't. So I have no desire to explain to you. Because what's the point? You have to get it on your own. Yeah. But not, I'm not, so that's not the arrogant thing. Yeah. It's just. Oh, but I want you to answer my question. Okay, it's, what's your question? Well, I'd like to hear what you have to say. I'd like to hear what you said again. Oh, okay. Thank you. No, I'm going to go see my hands if you do. Yeah. Like that. I love you so much for the <laughs> well, you can drive yourself. So that, so we just tried to like work out once another. Unfortunately, I mean, it's good that you know, but they're very much in the way. So imagine how long it is. Like you have to have some I said, imagine how long it would have taken us to get to an audio fire. That'd be great. We should do this with people. Right. We really should. Right. And then, um, and then we can do like people. We're doing anything on that other key. Right. Because we were all talking. And every single study group that I'm in, everybody was talking about studying philosophy of freedom. And now it's like, I'm starting to do
it's not no. And then also that there's no. Yeah, yeah, I was I was like it is. And the thing is, it's all about power. That's this area. Yeah. But I think it's like, I don't know why they should show this in the end. The thing is, it's not like the I wasn't like, I wish that had been around when you were first. Like, the face and all this. You have to free yourself from thinking. And I mean, you can just do it this way now. I understand what he's doing for you. Well, yeah, this morning, you know, having to do this with the thought of the I'm not paying attention in a different way. And so now. So, what is this? I'm not sure. 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 Yeah, you're wrong. Is that exactly the same for them? But hopefully, the side of the future is not going to be a good thing. I can't find it. 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 Well, I got thrown when he said we haven't gotten to the yellow yet. Because I thought we had gotten to the yellow. I thought the yellow was the third person, the first person. In this case, it wasn't a specific paragraph, but it was that. Right. And she's getting all the others. Yeah, so it's like she's not. Not doing uh, the greatest. Uh, Where so this is just as you said, you said today that I got was that the need to understand the question. Who did you need to know? Um, but those are not so abstract. If you die, you know, so this is a basic human question. Everybody, everybody's asking that all the time. What's going on? Yesterday, I know that, and then he's saying there's no theoretical answers for us. Who you found is going to find that in the, in the realm of the soul. Go ahead, and you'll start out. And it is different in every situation. But my mind is right. If you want to write, you have to read it. She's pretty, she's pretty, she has a way out. Where is the way out? Where is my freedom? He said the only spot to ask the freedom is to read it. She does. She has to read it. She has to read it. That's where we were given for you. 
So we get it to the end. Yeah, when you talk about it, you know, it's what happens inside. Well, most of our thoughts are dead, all the time. Those kind of thoughts that we were not dying out. But, yeah, you know, the thing is, I think that there's definitely things that she can do. It's just, it's like, yeah, I think that she can just have a little bit of a mask. And then I do yellow. It's not very good. 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 Now there's no more restrictions. Where the stuff is I think that this is going to be those moments now. I think so. I think that's it. I think also sometimes like in sleep or when you get up from sleep and you're having thoughts that's not the thoughts that's made up. That's a little farther. Yeah, that's... Well, I think about all of these things. After I was like, you know, I was like, you know, how it was. He, after I left, like, I was like, oh, we're going to come back on it. Yeah, Okay, off we go. Ding. Okay, ready, everybody? Ding. If I give you 20 bucks, will you take him to lunch? I don't, you know, I brought my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I want to share him with other people, so if you want to... Um, 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 sure, I was coming. I guess I'll take it somewhere else. So, you know, so, 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 so,